Hey everybody, welcome back. So yesterday I showed you the adapter that will allow you to take your isobutane stove and use it on one of those one pound propane bottles. Well today, we're gonna see which one is faster and we're gonna test it out with some boil times. All right, everybody, welcome back. You know, I had another video planned for today and I realized since I'd done the adapter video yesterday, It'd probably be a good idea to follow up with some boil times and test to see how quickly the propane works as opposed to the isobutane. So I figured we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison and we're going to start off with the propane and see if there's any real disadvantage in using the propane instead of the isobutane when it comes to cook times. So for today, for the exercise, I have my Keith Titanium mug here and I have two cups of water in it and another two cups ready to go. I use the Titanium mug because it cools down quickly and it will make it a lot easier when I have to uh, do the second round of uh, boil tests. Let's put a thermometer in here. It's about 58, no, 58, 59 degrees in the water currently. So we're going to put that on the burner and start our test. So let me fire up the burner here. Okay. go and start. Now I chose the E-Tech City Burner because it seemed to perform the best between the two so it's kind of a fair comparison. It kind of worked exactly the same with both the isobutane and the propane. I didn't want to get one that didn't work as equally. So what we're going to do is I'm going to run this through and I'm going to tell you when it's boiling. It you know, should take, bring you back a couple times to let you see what it looks like and then we'll test it out on the isobutane. We're about a minute and 38 seconds, 30, 40 seconds in there. We're starting to get some bubbles coming up from the top. So that's fairly quick. And I'll bring you back once we get a rolling boil. All right, we got about 315. And I would say we're pretty darn close to a rolling boil. And I'll let you watch the last few seconds here as it goes. And I'll stop the clock. I would say that's good. So let's say, there we go. Let's turn it off first. There you go. Three minutes and 34 seconds with the propane. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is take all this apart, cool the cup off a little bit, pour another two cups of water, and we're gonna try it out on the isobutane. All right, we have the adapter off and this on its proper isobutane fuel canister. I have the cup cooled off. I just poured some cold water in it to cool it off a little and let it, uh, let it cool off a little bit. Now we're going to put two more cups of water in here and see if the smaller isobutane canister can beat 3 minutes and 34 seconds. So let's put it on. It's about the same flame height. Put it on there. Something I'm noticing right away is that the flame is a little more contained. Um, it kind of turned the uh, handle there blue a little bit because it was blowing out up over the sides. So with the isobutane, the flame is a little more constrained. Whoops! All right, so if it's 20 seconds closer, we're just not gonna, we're gonna count it even. I forgot to start the uh, timer. So yeah, we'll give it 10 seconds. Um, so I see that it's a little more concentrated, a little more, um, concentrated to the bottom of the pot. So I'm going to bring you back when it gets close to a boil and we start seeing some bubbles and then I'll bring you back when it's a rolling boil. All right, we're a minute and 44 seconds, 45 seconds into it. Starting to see bubbles form on the bottom. So, so far it's pretty darn close to the, uh, to the propane. Let's see when we get a rolling boil. So we're about, let's say, three minutes right now. And we're starting to get the beginnings of a rolling boil. Now remember, I started this 10 seconds late. There you go. There's a rolling boil. All right. Turn that off. Stop the clock. There you go. So let's add 10 seconds to our time. That's about 3 minutes and 10 seconds. So 3 minutes and 20 seconds. And the propane was 334. So really, you're only saving about 10 seconds 
in, in using the smaller canister. So there really isn't much of a difference, at least in my tests here, for what I've done today. That was 3, 319, 320-ish, you know, for that one. So really isn't that bad. However, I will say, these are cooler to the touch than this one here. This one kind of, you can see the bluing here where it kind of blew out over and uh, burned the side. So they're pretty much almost identical as far as, you know, boil times. And uh, given this stove is the one that I see most commonly used on YouTube channels on, uh, on, online here, that's the one I decided to pick for today. I'm going to put this down here so I don't melt my plastic. And it seems like it's pretty darn close. So anyway, that is the boil comparison test between using the propane and the adapter and just using the isobutane. And they seem pretty close. So you're really not giving up too much by using uh, the adapter and propane other than compact size. So again, if you're using this in a bug out bag, would I suggest carrying this? Heck no, it's too heavy. You know, these are much lighter. You can put two or three of these in your bag and still save on the weight because this is a steel container too, even when it's empty. But what I recommend for say car camping or overlanding or anything like that, or even a kit you keep in your vehicle, and I do have a stove that is a remote canister stove that we're gonna be using with this for my car kit. So, so something like that, you can't go wrong. I mean, you know, that's just giving you more fuel options. You could stick two or three of these in, uh, in your uh, car kit for your, for your emergency kit in your vehicle and you'll be just fine. And for home use, if you're not into getting a full size, say, you know, big Coleman stove, and you want to buy a couple of these burners, this is much easier and more common to stockpile. Um, if you live in an urban area, like I'm thinking when I lived in New York City, I never even saw these little canisters. But I did see these occasionally in stores. So if you live in an urban area in a smaller environment, and remember, whenever you're doing this kind of gas and cooking indoors, make sure you have a well-ventilated area. You do not want to get die from carbon monoxide poisoning. So if you're doing it that way, yeah, the propane would probably be cheaper and easier to store and stockpile. Anyway, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I did get a couple requests for this, so I decided to bump today's video to tomorrow. And I hope you enjoyed the video. So don't forget to share, click like if you liked it, and subscribe. This is kind of the content we do. We do outdoor gear and reviews. And uh, don't forget to check out our Amazon link down below. This is available in our Amazon store, the little propane adapter. If you're interested, it's the first thing in there. If you don't see anything in the store you like, just click the link and shop as you normally would. You know, just click the link, go to my store, and then search from the search bar. You'll find whatever you want online normally. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it really helps out the channel a whole lot. And don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link below that. If you're interested in getting started in freeze-dried foods, check out our Thrive Life link. It's really good stuff. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.